Hi everyone! So today I will get my contrast between the purple and the gold that I wanted last week but didn't get. <laughs> I have my texts in purple and gold mixed there and I made the, a contraption here with the, the bottom of a bottle and I want to place it in the middle of my canvas like so and just pour and see what will happen on there. I also intend to put a base coat of paint. It's just uh, basically colorless phosphorescent paint. Uh, it will dry pretty much transparent but should glow in the dark uh, depending on if I manage to get a thick enough coat of uh, glow in the dark pigment. And uh, I also have fluorescent colors because I like the second aspect the fluorescent colors will give to my paintings once I change the lighting. And I also have a little bit of pearl because metallic paints super nice and shiny. I never get enough of them. I also mix my paint the usual way. So it's um, for the inks or iFlow acrylics depending on what you use. I mix them both the same. I will do one part ink to 10 part medium and then I add about a, well, a couple of drops of water about 5% just to help them flow and lower the density. Today I added water to everything. I do not want cells. I'm not looking for cells. So water everywhere. All low density paints except maybe the phosphorescent but it will be under. Uh, the both metallic paints are a bit heavier, but it shouldn't create cells, especially that I put water in both. Uh, the heavy body paints, I mixed uh, one part paint, one part medium, same amount. And then I add 25% uh, water to that mix. I like to add the water to the mix uh, so I know exactly how much mix I have because uh, the paint and the medium are both um, acrylic polymers and so the medium helps uh, to have uh, more binding not more but it's like a paint without color in it and so the mix I can add more water than if I had just added the water to the paint and yeah, I will zoom you in and we'll get started with that. Okay, so we'll start by putting a base coat so the paint have an easier time to flow. And then I have my colorless phosphorescent paint. It should dry mostly transparent, so maybe we'll get... Uh, to see a bit of the detail of the canvas under that. Depending on how much uh, details the other paints will create. I'm using a painting knife to spread it around. Tilt it like that. Make sure to remove the excess paint. I have a little club there. Not too sure what happened there. It happens. Got the bubbles as well. And then my super contraption. Pretty sure it's not going to be leveled so the paint will flow out weirdly, but what I'll do is just try to center it first. 
that looks uh, about right, I guess. And if it's not leveled, I'll just turn it as I go and I pour paint on top. So, ready? Let's do this. Those drips are just beautiful. So just make sure to empty the gold and the purple since those are the colors that I wanted the most. But I'm pretty sure I have enough paint as is on there. Let it drip a little bit. And remove it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that time lapse and I quite enjoyed painting this one. I didn't quite expect all those drips detail details, but I have to say that I'm quite happy with it. It's a whole bunch of lines everywhere and it's really, really, really cool. I can't wait for the gold to dry and have some nice sharp gold lines. Right now it's really dull because it's mixed with the medium, but as the medium dry it will become transparent. And I think it's going to contrast very nicely. I have some small, small cells popping up uh, in the gold mostly. The gold was the heaviest density paint uh, on there. so. It's okay. I have some to well, it, it just creates some pretty amazing details because they appear in between the lines and I really love it. It's really, really cool. All the detail created by that, it's just amazing. And it gave me another idea that I want to uh, try really soon. I will do this. Uh, I won't tell you, but you'll have to watch. Uh, Probably next week I'll have that set up for you. I think it's going to be quite the painting. I'll go back to the sources. Honestly, I really, really love that painting. Lines everywhere. It's just amazing. And the smoothness between the 
orange and the yellow as well. And you can see the orange and yellow details uh, a bit uh, mixing together. I quite like this. I can't wait to put it under a black light. I think it's going to look amazing, uh, both under daylight and black light. <laughs> Seriously, guys, it's uh, very, very happy with this. So yeah, um, I'll have to do this again and try this again with the, maybe the other uh, bottom of the bottle and uh, maybe on a, another shape, uh, other shape of canvas. But uh, on this circle, it's uh, a little bit bigger than the circles uh, I used uh, in the past week. Uh, I think it's just the perfect size for this. It slid off a bit uh, offset, but I think it only makes it more interesting because of the details that it created. All the waves here and here, it just stretched a bit of the details. Uh, it's just amazing guys. <laughs> Quite happy with this one and I uh, can't wait for it to dry. I will try this again with other colors combination. Uh, it's just fun to paint with things you find around you and try to imagine how it will come out. And uh, This one came out better than I imagined so I couldn't be happier. It's just uh, wonderful. It reminds me a bit of the drips I have uh, around the canvas on my table, but it's actually on the, on the canvas. And I'll have to manage to find a way uh, to have the drips on the canvas and the drips on the table in one single painting. And that's what I will work with for uh, next week. I'll try to find a way to do that and I have a pretty good idea. So yeah, very happy with that. Can't wait for it to dry. It will darken quite a bit. The contrast will be uh, even more dramatic with the purple and the gold. And seriously, it's going to be amazing. So this is it for today. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day. Make sure to subscribe for more and I will see you in the next video. Bye!